Hi everyone and welcome to Mindful Mondays. My name is Cheryl Clem and I'm really glad to be here with you today. I am here with, um, truthfully, two of my favorite people. I'm here with Marty Mance and Tally Arswald who are members of our prayer team. Uh, and, and so I'd like to get started just by having you get to know them a little bit. So Tally, would you start just a moment, tell people a little bit about um, who you are and what you do. Hi, I'm Tally Auerswald, and I'm a pastor here at Mountain View Church. I've been serving here um, for seven years, and um, I joined the Inner Healing Restoration Team about five years ago, and I was on that team for about three years. I took a little break, and now I'm rejoining starting next week, which I'm really excited about. I have, I was a young adult pastor here for about a year, and I'm currently in my master's degree for my, a divinity program through the Evangelical Covenant Church, well, sponsored by them at North Park University, and I am just um, grateful to be here, and I'm grateful to serve God, and I'm grateful for the community that I'm a part of, and I feel like every relationship I have at Mountain View is just so impactful to who I've become and who I'm becoming. So thank I'm really glad to be here. Yeah. yeah, thank you, Tally. And Marty, give us the the uh, just short version of who you are. Both of you have so much depth, so I, I hate to limit it, but tell well, us a little bit about who you are. I promise to keep it short. Uh, I would also add on to Tally that she brings the kingdom of heaven wherever she goes. Oh, uh, I agree. But, but a little bit about me. Um, I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a grandfather. Um, and I have the opportunity to serve in a few different capacities at our church, Mountain View Church. Um, I'm an overseer, which we also call an elder and just at my 50th birthday a couple weeks ago. So I kind of relate to that name a little bit more closely. Uh, <laughs> I also serve in the men's ministry. And then really for our conversation today, I've had the fortunate opportunity to serve in our, our um, inner healing um, and prayer ministry. And because Jesus um, has come to restore those things that which are lost and heal those broken places. And, and that's the name of our, our ministry is, uh, like Tally mentioned, is the restoration ministry. Yeah. So that's a little bit about me. Perfect. Thank you both so much. And today's topic is about prayer, but, but more importantly, about the type of prayer that brings about everything we've been talking about for the past 10 weeks. And it's really kind of a culmination of talking about all of the different areas of wholeness and all these different parts of ourself, our body, our mind, and our spirit. And really the focus of today is how do we take that and bring the parts of ourself to God and invite him into that process to restore. And I love the name of our ministry. It's, it's not, um, and I hate to use the word just because when you use the word prayer, there's not you know, just doesn't fit, but it's not just prayer. It, it's restoration. It's the work that God is doing. And so I want to start the conversation with this question because both of you have training in prayer ministry, in healing ministry, in restoration. Both of you have been through this process in your own life. Both of you have experience and personal experiences and 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 all of the life that you bring to it. So let's start the conversation with this question. What, what information can you share with people that helps them understand prayer beyond, I have just a request, but I'm, I'm inviting God into it. In fact, there's a, a quote from Graham Cook that I just love. He says, what, what if prayer is not just praying toward God, mm. but what if prayer is 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 with him so i want to talk about that with him and then when we get the with him what does that bring so so tally let's start with you experience stories anything that comes to mind that helps people understand restorative prayer yeah so 
there's kind of two subcategories that come to mind in talking about restorative prayer. So there's the, the, both of them is with God. So we can do it with God in partnership with other people, or we can do it with God alone. So with God in partnership with other people and what we do in the team is so powerful because people aren't alone. And, you know, sometimes they don't have the words. Sometimes they're, they feel blocked because of emotion or whatever is going on. And so when we get to partner with them, with Jesus, we get to stand in that place and stand for, for their breakthrough. We get to stand for their healing. We get to give them words that they might not know or have for themselves. And through that, what we're doing is we're asking Holy Spirit to be the guide. We're asking Holy Spirit to say, show us in this place, show us in in this life, show us what is going on. Where do you want to go today? What do you want to do today in our brother or our sister? And then we just get to partner with that and we get visions or, or um, feelings or words or thoughts or observation. And we're sharing that space on behalf of the person. And then there's the intimacy with God, the, the one-on-one that you can do alone. And I have a story for that. I am, um, especially speaking of wholeness, I, my husband and I were going on a trip to Australia and I was so excited and so scared. I hadn't really traveled that much before. And he said, oh, go online and get the visas. And I'm like, okay, sure, right? Within about 25 seconds, I am berating him with text messages. I'm having an emotional breakdown. I am blaming him. I'm saying, you, why did you tell me to do this? You know, I'm going from zero to 10, which immediately I drop my phone. And I know that's a signal that I'm, I have a wound. <laughs> that's a signal where my emotions aren't necessarily matching the situation. Mm. So I, I, I close my eyes and I say, Lord, where is there brokenness in me? Where is there a part of me that isn't operating in the fullness of God? And I just got this image of me sitting on a curb with my hands in my head and I I see the outfit that I'm wearing and it's totally this 23 year old me. And I'm on this bus traveling around America and I'm feeling broken, I'm feeling lost, I'm feeling misunderstood, um, I'm feeling powerless. Like all these feelings that I'm feeling, that I felt then, I was literally feeling just trying to do a, a quick minute or however long it would take, visa. And I'm like, oh Lord, oh Lord. So I, I just present that part of my life to God. I say, God, I, 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 I confess that I was in a place of brokenness. That I didn't turn to you that. And I just pour out my heart. And then all of a sudden it's as if like sun just came into my heart and into my body. Like I just felt the warmth and even in my eyes closed, it's like, I can only see yellow as if I was staring at the sun and I just closed my eyes. And I just felt this, this part of me just so whole and complete and this embrace in my heart and my spirit. And I'm bawling alone. And this is just a matter of moments. And so I get back on my computer and it literally took three minutes to do. It wasn't that difficult at all whatsoever. I was not in reality previous to this. But this is the kind of stuff that God is calling us too. He's calling us when we have these moments on earth when things are not making sense and we have all these emotions, he's calling us to just look to him because he knows our story better than we even know our story. And Tally, you said something so important that I want to go back to because I don't want people to miss this. Our emotional reactions tell us something. So when we're, like you said, it didn't match the situation, right? And so that signals to us, not that, oh, you're crazy or you're over emotional or you're, that signals to us that there's a hurt and a wound that God wants to heal. And so then part two of what you said is that you, you had learned and you knew, okay, even in these small things, I bring God into that. Mm-hmm. 
And that in that process, realizing I have a wound, bringing God into it is where you found the freedom. Yes. And so that really simple concept is something I think people can hold on to. So Marty, share with us something that's on your heart and mind, just through all of this about restorative prayer, an experience, a thought, what's coming up for you? Yeah, even, I mean, I had some thoughts before we even came together, but listening to Tally talk just made me really, really just like almost expanding a little bit on what she was saying already is this, like, what was it we're restoring? We're, we're restoring it back to the Lord's original design. You know, scripture says he has countless thoughts about us before land and time created, before, you know, before we, before we were conceived, before we, before life happened. And so Tally shared an experience that, that um, in essence took away from that original design. So she needed a little bit later when she was listening to her body. Like for me, I get this tightness in my chest. And when I say that, I have to quantify it. It's not like a heart attack or anything. I just, I, the Lord created us body, mind, spirit, and soul. And so when we listen to these cues, it's different for everybody. Um, it's, it's a sign. It's the Lord communicating with us in, in our own personal way that hey, there's something going on that he wants to partner with us. And just because we're in these, we live in two different worlds. We live in the spiritual realm and we live in this, this realm on earth as well. And, and we don't have the luxury to choose one or the other. You know, when the Lord comes back and restores his kingdom on earth and will be those two will be combined but for now it's kind of like that venn diagram you know where you cross them over and we're we're trying to figure out how to live in this like in these dual worlds and and really it's this listening and partnering with the holy spirit and he may be the the thunder i think what he was talking about talking to elijah it's like he said he's not the thunder he's not the earthquake like he was a gentle whisper I don't believe he was saying he can't be in those things, but for Elijah in that particular time, he needed Elijah to quiet himself down and hear his voice in a gentle whisper. And so when we partner um, with people, and, and, and it's not something we do that's special, we do have training, um, and it's really just being in a relationship like we're doing right now, um, to be able to, to have another person listen to what's going on, to be able to just be an extra set of ears to hear. I think this is what the Lord may be telling you because anybody who has a relationship with Jesus has the wonderful counselor within inside them. He has the comforter. He or she has the comforter inside them. So that same spirit that's in us is in, is in everybody. And so I just, I get excited. I wish I could do it all the time. You know, it's just mm -hmm. being able to walk with people and see how the Lord's restoring those places within their life, whether it's the agreements that they make about themselves there some things that are untrue or you know overcoming those just those terrible things that have happened with them i mean there's a myriad of reasons we could talk for an hour of the type of restoring that's um that god's in the business for um, but this holy spirit is really the one who comes back to change and restore those places and make them new and fresh and whole again even for somebody who's like 50 years old like myself <laughs> and I'm older than you, Marty, so <laughs> we're not going to talk about age. <laughs> but um, yes, even for someone that, like me, like there's always something to learn. There's always something fresh and new. There's always when we bring God into things and when we bring other people, brothers and sisters and believers who have the Holy Spirit in them, he works in that partnership with with his spirit and others and our spirit. And it's not a process that is kind of isolated and alone in our head. That becomes spinning thoughts and that doesn't heal and restore. And so I love that you brought that up. It's a, again, going back to Graham Cook's um, quote, it's about with God, it's about partnership and bringing not only God but others into it. It's 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 different, though. Would you agree? And and maybe we can talk about this just for a minute. It's different than maybe how a lot of people view prayer. Maybe they've seen, you know, a movie and and it's one person alone, you know, praying, or maybe that's what they were taught to do or thought or so. Just 
talk about that for a, a little bit, minute and, and Tally, I'll bounce back to you. What, what's the difference between what we maybe think about as prayer and or are taught as prayer and just maybe a thought or a nugget about what you've learned that brings about this, you know, wholeness that we're talking about? Yeah, well, um, Marty kind of pointed to it with the fact that, you know, all of this work that we're doing is restoring us to how God created us to be. Um, and I think some of the interpretations of prayer is that you are saying these things and they're just being lifted up into the sky and you hope that God hears you or you hope that maybe it'll have some kind of power. Um, but every conversation that you have with God, he listens. You know, every, everything that you're praying, God is considering and, and is listening and is involved in. And especially, especially if it aligns with his loving, creative, um, generous heart. When we, when we align, it's like a, it's almost like a twist. Sometimes we're trying to bring heaven, kind of like pull heaven to us, which in some capacities I can see, but more importantly, we're partnering with heaven. We're partnering with the creation, with the wholeness that we already are. And as we cultivate our relationship with God, as we cultivate that intimacy with God, we build trust and then we continue to to kind of be a little bit more vulnerable and a little bit more vulnerable and a little bit more vulnerable and a little bit more vulnerable with him. And then we see God show up again and again and again. And then that starts to all of a sudden you, you know, you're developing this authenticity with self. And then now you're having love for each person. Cause now you're like, this stuff works. There's wholeness here for me. I want to pray for you and I want to pray for you and let's see what God does with you and with you and with you. And then all of a sudden and now we're in the, we're in the business of restoring all things back to the one who created them. Um, and it's so interesting because I don't know if this is on topic, but I had this new revelation this week and I realized that prayer really has developed me in my generosity. Mm. And when I hoard my feelings, when I hoard my life, when I hoard and want to just keep everything to myself um, in prayer and in my spiritual walk, I'm not very generous with anything else in my life. But when I, when I, when I begin to like pure generosity, you know, not giving with attachment. Right. Um, but then when I begin to pray for develop my prayer life with God and develop my prayer life with other people, I just constantly want to give it and constantly want to experience it and want to pray for other people. I want to give material and just do whatever I can so that I can see the kingdom of God in the life of my life. Well, and that's the beauty, right, is that when, when we receive and when we feel, uh, feel filled up, then it pours out and benefits others. It's part of, again, the way things, the way things work. Um, Marty, tell us a little bit. So I want to put some meat on the bones here, right, because there might still be people, we're all at different stages, right, of figuring out life and, and for us and, and God's word and, and how all of these things work. Let's put a little meat on the bones. What does this type of prayer, like if we were to paint a picture for people, this restorative prayer process, mm -hmm. What does it look like? What does it sound like? And I know, Marty, you and I were talking earlier about this. So tell us a little bit about some things that came to your mind to describe this. Right, right. You know, really one of the biggest things as I'm sitting here listening is really how, how do we identify in our relationship with the Lord? Like, do we identify as a son or a daughter or a slave? And those seem like they're dramatic, like polar, but like when Talia was talking about praying, like, Am I talking to someone I know and trust? And, you know, scripture talks about Jesus hanging out with his buddies after, you know, he conquered the grave. And so that's really an important place to start. So when we pray, we do everything in Jesus's name because it's in the power of the Holy Spirit that really 
has the transformation transformational power and Tally's story where she talked about being a 23 year old Jesus showed her where he was through that process and so it's just a reminder that he will never leave us he'll never forsake us and so we partner in prayer with that to, to have Jesus really show where he's been that whole time and and thinking about this I actually uh, created a short little vi a visual I'm a, I'm a visual learner and so I created a little a little video um, a little vignette um, that can give, give us a little picture I love that because I'm the same way. I, I like to see things. I'm a visual learner. I, I learn by doing. And so I love that you did that. We're going to take a look at that right now. Hi, everybody. Marty here. And I've just been spending some time reflecting on how Jesus has come to restore and really make all things new. And so I have this visual of, uh, of a light box. And so this light box represents when a when a baby is conceived, there is a light that's within them that just shines. You know, the spirit of the Lord shines. Just think of a newborn baby when a baby's born. It's just it's perfect. And then over time, life happens. And what I mean by that is, you know, sometimes rejection has happened. People treated us poorly. Um, we've been physically or even mentally abused. We've been rejected by other people. Those are all things that that are significant. And you can even drop them in the category of the, the sins that are done to us that can seemingly extinguish our life. And then when we add to that our own choices, the things that we do to ourselves that can cause mental or physical harm to ourselves. And like I think of maybe substance abuse could be an example and the effects that it has on our body and on our mind could be another way to seemingly extinguish the light. And then there's this other category of the agreements that we make. I don't know about you, but when I look in the mirror, uh, I don't always like what I see. Um, I don't like physically what I see sometimes. I don't like um, the thoughts that I have about myself. Those agreements that I make can really affect um, my life and how it shines. And then when we add to that this last category of the sins of the father, it can be called. And once someone asked me one time, is that literal sins of the father, like your father, or metaphorically speaking? And my answer was yes. It's, we need to think about things that have been passed on through generations that can affect us today. An example of that, I was watching this old Western the other day. Of course, it was fiction, um, but it was about these two families, these feuding families from like three generations before, and it was affecting the current generation, the current and the present day. And so that's an example of things that happen from future generations, from people we know or we don't even know that can, can affect our present day lives. And so that's where it's important we allow Jesus to work in and through us and allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through us. And we start partnering with the Lord and we start forgiving people. We start rejecting lies and the things that we believe about ourselves. And we just start handing our cares. Scripture says, cast your cares onto the Lord. And we just start rejecting and renewing and allowing the Lord and the Holy Spirit to make all things new. And so when, when we allow Jesus to work in and through us, the Holy Spirit wants to make all things new. So I use the word seemingly, that the light was seemingly extinguished because it wasn't extinguished. It was just covered with all of the things that happen throughout life. And so scripture also talks about like us wearing a basket and it's like stopping our light from shining. And this is a good visual of what it's referring to. Because sometimes wearing baskets that we've made consciously we wear and sometimes we have unconscious ones that we're wearing that's just really blocking our light to shine. So I hope this blesses you and I hope you know that Jesus loves you and he created you perfectly. So my prayer for you is that you will hear and see the countless thoughts that the Lord has about you because he created you perfectly before land and time was created. So I pray that the Holy Spirit blesses you and that you see yourself the way the Lord sees you. So bye bye for now. Marty, thank you, first of all, for putting that together. I think that is so clear, it gave, uh, gave us such a great visual. And you know what stood out the most to me was just this, the statement that you made that the light is still there. 
it's not it's not that that you're bad or you're irredeemable or that this stuff has overtaken you it the stuff is real and it's covering but it's covering the light so it's more about this restorative process right removing all of these things that are not good for us that god doesn't intend for us so so tell us just tell us any other um key points that's what stood out to me what's coming to you marty yeah i know sometimes there's this it's like excavating you know sometimes we have to mine to get some of those the dirt out of the way to be able to get to the light and so I touched on just a little bit in the video when i talked about you know forgiving and it's it's really always partnering with jesus it's not just saying i forgive which is very powerful when i when i if someone's wronged me and i and i say i choose to forgive them today but when we I shouldn't say but, and when we add in Jesus and say in Jesus's name, because really Jesus, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that is the one who makes the change. And so we proclaim in Jesus's name that I choose today to forgive or to cast our cares. You know, that's the scripture says, it, which translates to Jesus, I give this to you. I give you this belief that my mom rejected me, or I, or I give you this lie that I believe about myself, whatever the case may be. It's, we weren't designed to carry that. Our bodies, our minds, our souls were not designed to carry these burdens. And that's been a tactic of the enemy to get in to create this disharmony, um, division, fear, all of that. So we want to be able to, to give it to Jesus. He wants it. That's why he came to restore you know, that which was lost. And so that's really the powerful thing is to first just listen to what the Holy Spirit's saying. And then when he reveals, then to be able to partner with him in that way and say, Jesus, I give this to you. There's no magic words. I want people to know that there aren't magic words. It's if you remember to proclaim it in Jesus' name, other than that, say what you want. And he knows, like he knows your heart. And we have to proclaim it out loud, you know, victory. It's very powerful to do it that way as well. So Those are just a few tools and strategies I would add. So good to remember that when we say in Jesus name, that it's not just again, the rote, right? In Jesus name, mm -hmm. we pray, but it's like, there's power in that because that name has power and authority that's been given to us. And so when we agree with that, when we partner with that, when we proclaim that there's a, there's something that takes place spiritually. So Tally, what are some of your thoughts? Well, immediately from just you saying that, I was thinking, there is power in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I <laughs> and, love that. <laughs> but to Marty's video, his incredible video, which is so relevant too, to what we're experiencing in the earth right now, um, this whole generational sin and, you know, really confessing on behalf of yourself, of sometimes your family line, of your nation, of the land, you know, there's power. There's so much healing and restoration and wholeness that can come from that. And there have been some people that have just radical stories of God putting something on their heart and on their mind when it comes to the generations before them and them seeing healing in the family now with aunts and uncles that haven't spoken in 25 years and two days after we had a prayer session confessing behalf on behalf of generations before they were reconciled on their own which is just radical um so just to encourage people in their prayer life to ask god god what what do i need to forgive or what do I need to confess? Who, who, what do I need to forgive um, to clear the way? And, and not only clear the way of our hearts, but clear the way of the legacy that is coming after us. So that the line starts stops here. It is There's a line in the sand here. And I want to you know, create as much as we can and partner with God a, a new world and a new legacy in Christ Jesus. Yeah, that's beautiful, Tally, and I love that. Um, it's kind of the visual of the light box that Marty had to just, it's clearing these things yeah. away. And like you said, clearing the path, clearing the road and, and walking that road that is the life we're meant to have internally. Yeah. 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 So, so our time is short and, 
and it's up. And so I want to ask each of you, we've covered a lot and prayer is such a big topic. You know, when I thought about this topic, I thought, oh my goodness, you know, how are we even going to wrangle this in? But I think just to think of it in terms of understanding prayer in terms of this partnership with God, partnership with others, and the goal being that invitation to, to restore, to clear out, like you both of you have talked about, clear out the old, clear out everything that's not of God, clear out everything that's not helpful and healthy and bringing in what's fresh and new and is going to breathe life into you. So, so what are some closing thought, like just a closing thought, both of you are just engaged with people in prayer. You, you are part of this process. God is using you to restore. What final thought or word would you give to people to encourage them to learn more and, and just participate in this type of prayer more? So I would say, um, and it's not even really, it's not necessarily about prayer. It's more of the really most important thing is scripture says to guard your heart for it is the wellspring of life. And we need to, we have to be advocates and be self-remembering and be less self-forgetting to, to make ourselves a priority. And that means um, just hanging out with Jesus, spending time with him, um, really invoking that supernatural power that we have. Like when we say in Jesus' name, I'll say in Jesus' name, I bless or I break because it's his power. Um, but doing that over all of our kingdom and domain that we're responsible for and really being mindful of what we're consuming. And I don't mean food and water. I mean like the, the things that we're allowing our eyes and our ears to hear. Those are all things that will to remember that I have to guard my heart. And if, when I guard my heart, it frees up space for me to then partner with the Lord in a different way and to be able to pray and, and restore. Yeah, I love I love that. And and Tally, what what's coming to you? What are your final words of encouragement? So I just really feel on my heart that um, God wants to break the lie for some people watching that they feel like they when they try to approach God, they have a fear that they're a burden to God, that they feel like they're bothering God. That maybe um, when they would approach one of their parents, they'd be like, "What? What do you want?" You know, and that's not the God that we're talking about. In fact, scripture says that God delights in us. He is so excited to share his heart, share his plan for our life, to dive into our hearts and to help restore who we are. It is literally the joy of his life. And so I just want to encourage you to step out and step into Christ because he is so excited to talk with you, to just maybe lay in a meadow with you, you know, whatever your groove is, he wants to groove with you. Um, yeah, that's what I really feel. I, I love both of your hearts and I love that you are part of our prayer team and that you, that you lead in this and that you care enough to spend your, your time and give of yourselves in this way. So thank you. Thank you, first of all, for being here. I think this is, this is such an important topic. And so I'm grateful for both of you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Tal. Thank you so much. It is such an honor and a privilege to serve you. Yeah. And thanks, Marty. Thanks, Marty. And so everyone, we will see you um, next week. Next week is our actual um, final wrap up of our Mindful Mondays segments that we had um, wanted to do just through this time of, of COVID and, and just really a time of support and encouragement and working with the team people want to see this continue. And so we're working on an event for the summer. We're working on some things for the fall. And, uh, but join us next week for our final wrap up of just this weekly segment. And we're so glad you're here. And my prayer is that you will really think about just um, what was shared here today and that you will partner more with God, partner more with others, um, because God wants to restore you. And if we can ever help you in any way, you can email us at care at mvc.life. You can reach out to me, Cheryl, 
uh, at mbc.life and have a great week.